Oh, hello everybody again. This time we're doing lesson 5.3 about friction, air resistance, water resistance, and up frost. We are going to identify up frost, friction, air resistance, and water resistance. See that an object may have multiple forces acting upon it even when at rest. Use force diagrams to show the name and direction of forces acting on an object. Use knowledge of forces to predict which parachute will fall faster. Describe the accuracy of our prediction based on results. Decide when measurements need to be repeated to get more reliable data measured accurately. Collect and record measurements in a table. Make a parachute and suggest how to improve it. Make a conclusion based on results and knowledge of forces. Getting started. Describe the two surfaces that rub together as Marcus rides his bike along the path. What is the force between these two surfaces called? What effect does it have on how fast Marcus can ride his bike? Talk about when you are swimming. Is there any friction in the water? What is friction? In this picture, Marcus is riding his bike along a gravel path. The bike's tires on the gravel path try to slide past each other. The force between the two surfaces that are trying to slide past each other is called friction. Friction always acts on moving objects. Friction always works in the direction opposite to the direction the object is moving. This slows down the moving object. Water resistance and air resistance are types of friction. Water resistance is a force that slows things down that are moving through water. Air resistance is a force that slows things down that are moving through air. Air resistance affects all moving objects on Earth. As objects move, the air pushes against the object, slowing down its movement. Both water resistance and air resistance are sometimes called drag because they drag back the moving object. So the key words are air resistance, drag, friction, streamlined, up frost, up frost, water resistance. Forces in water. Have you tried to push a beach ball down in a sea or a swimming pool? The ball will not, the ball will not start to go down. The ball floats on the surface. This is because there is a force in the water that pushes things up. This is called an up thrust force. Any object that moves through water will be swept down by the drag or water resistance. The shape of the object can help to reduce the drag. Objects at first in the picture have a sleek or streamlined shape. This causes less disturbance of the water and therefore less drag. Someone tries to copy the streamlined shape of fish. Activity Identify frost, gravity, and water re resistance. Look at the picture of the boat. Identify the force pushing the boat up. Identify the force pushing the boat down. Identify a force that will happen when the boat moves through the water. Draw the boat. Draw and label three arrows to show the forces you identified as questions one to three. Why do fish move quickly through water? How do we use science to design plastic caps for swimmers? Air resistance. Air resistance pushes against a moving object, such as a car, and slows it down. The larger the surface area of the moving object, the more air resistance there is. 
air resistance also pushes against falling objects and slows them down. Look at the photograph of hot air balloons. Air resistance helps to keep the balloons up, but the people in the basket under the balloon fill the balloon with gas. The gas is lighter than air, and the balloon shut floats. Parachute uses air resistance to work. The person needs the parachute to help them reach the earth slowly and safely. It is very light and light and has a very big surface area. It catches lots of air in it as it falls down. This creates a lot of air resistance. Think like a scientist. Compare two parachutes. You will need thin string, thin plastic, sticky tape to identical weight such as small plastic toys, scissors, and a stopwatch. How to make the parachutes. Cut two squares from the plastic sheet. One square must be 10 by 10 centimeters and the other square 20 by 20 centimeters. Trim the edges with the scissors to make an eight-sided shape. Make a small hole with a pencil near the edge of each side. Spread a piece of string about uh, about something long from each hole. Tie knot so that so that the string does not come through the holes. The strings must be the same length. Join the ends of the eight strings with a knot. Attach the object you are using for a way to the knot with sticky tape. Your parachute. Stand on a chair and raise your arm to drop your small parachute. Remember that you want to drop it as slowly as possible, so don't throw it. Use the stopwatch to record how many seconds it takes for the parachute to reach the ground. Repeat three times to check your results. Decide whether you need to repeat more times to get more reliable data. Record your results in a table. Predict whether the larger parachute will fall faster or slower than the small parachutes. Repeat these steps of the large parachute to test your prediction. Questions. Answer these questions in your group. Name two forces that act on that act on your parachute after you dropped it. Draw a force diagram to show the forces acting on your parachute. Calculate the average time it took your small parachute to fall. Calculate the average time it took your large parachute to fall. Which parachute took longer to fall? Was this what you predicted? Explain why one parachute fell faster than the other. Suggest a way to change your parachute to make it fall more slowly. Write a conclusion about the speed the parachute falls compared to the size of the parachute and forces acting on it. Continued. How are we doing? Answer the following questions about your group. For each question, choose from one of these faces. Happy, normal, or sad. How well do we decide when measurements needed to be repeated to give more accurate data? How well did we measure them accurately and record measurements? How well do we use results in their knowledge of forces to make a conclusion? Did I work well in my group? Could I have made a better contribution? Look what I can do. I can identify friction, thrust, air resistance, and water resistance, or drag. I can see that an object may have multiple forces acting upon it, even when at rest. I can use force diagrams to show the name and direction of forces acting on an object. I can use knowledge of forces to predict which parachute will fall faster. I can describe the accuracy of my prediction based on results. I can decide when measurements need to be repeated to give more reliable data. I can measure accurately. I can collect and record measurements in a table. I can make a parachute and suggest how to improve. I can make a conclusion based on results 
knowledge of forces. So thank you and goodbye. Bye. See you next time.